Inside Out 2, directed by Kelsey Mann, is the newest Pixar film in theaters, and you guys are going to hate me for this, but this November, it will have been 29 years since Toy Story came out. Toy Story is almost 30 years old. I'm sorry. As for the first Inside Out, that movie is great, but I've never really had this big connection with it. I never resonated with it the way a lot of other people seem to. I acknowledge though, it is an amazing film in terms of animation, creativity, the character designs, and the way that this concept is executed. They fired on all cylinders. It's just not a film that I'm ever jumping out of my seat to go rewatch, or at least that was the case because Inside Out 2 is fantastic. Give me my intro. Oh. Riley is now 13, and you know what that means? Puberty! Uh, that's okay. You can keep it. But what comes with it ain't just body odor and a bad attitude. No, 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 no. It also brings with it new emotions. And those emotions are bored, oh, I'm sorry, on way, envy, embarrassment, and rushing in to break up our alliteration, anxiety. It ruins everything, doesn't it? Now between these new emotions and our OG guys, there's of course gonna be some growing pains and it gets to a point where anxiety just goes, you know what, all y'all old emotions, yeah, honestly, we don't need y'all here. So y'all can, can, can go, you're free to go. Yeah, she totally like kicks them out, so like they have to try to find their way back to headquarters before anxiety effectively ruins Riley's relationship with her best friends. And we'll talk more about Riley, you know, towards the end of the review. For right now, I wanna get into our original gang of emotions. I'm talking joy, fear, sadness, disgust, and anger. I didn't love them the first time around with the first movie, and I really couldn't tell you why, but with this new film, it actually showed me why I wasn't too crazy about the first film, and it is because we only really get joy and sadness together for a good portion of that film. And I really wanted to see everybody together firing on all cylinders. And that's for pretty much most of this film. And I appreciated it. I mean, these guys are so entertaining to watch. They're so pleasant to look at. The character designs are great for these guys. I feel like the actors and the animators and the direction and the writing, it's all working together to pull this ensemble together that is just so watchable. I could watch these guys for like hours on end, I could. As for the new emotions, they're all pretty good too, especially anxiety. Of course, anxiety is the big standout in the film. And, and, and yeah, she has some moments near the end of the film that are particularly Intriguing, I'll use that word, intriguing. Let's talk about the animation for a second. Yeah, the movie looks great. I mean, what did you expect? It's Pixar in 2024, like, of course the movie's gorgeous. I'll say this though, I felt like the movie looked great when we were in Riley's mind. It was actually when we weren't in Riley's mind when I felt like the film was really jumping off the screen. I mean, they have gotten really good at animating humans. You know, it's not, it's not that they try to make the humans look realistic or anything like that, but it's just they've mastered these tiny little details like wrinkles whenever you're making a face or the sweat that beads down or the pores or like just little imperfections like blushing or pimples, you know, things like that. Like they really have made these characters look so great with this animation that it's scary. When our, when our original emotions get kicked out, they come across these other characters while they're like imprisoned. And one of these other characters is a video game character that resembles somebody from Final Fantasy. I've never played Final Fantasy, so I'm sure you guys will know all about this, but I got such a kick out of this dude. And he talks like this. And the music is always swelling while he's speaking and it makes everything sound so dramatic. And there's a scene where his video game animation is really bad. I'm somebody that played a lot of video games when I was a child. I have played my fair share of really bad video games. I love them, okay? So this guy was, I, I, I ate it up. This guy was 
fantastic to me. I, I missed him when he wasn't on screen. I was like, oh no, where's Lance? I also really dug the sarcasm. I, th <laughs> I thought that was hilarious in the trailer. It was hilarious in the movie. Sarcasm. Boy, are we so lucky we ran into you guys. Boy, are we so I want to jump back to the animation real quick because I guess the reason why I wasn't too impressed with the scenery in Riley's mind was because we don't really go to that many new places while we're in her mind. We do we do get a couple. One of them in particular has to do with her sense of self, which is actually a physical thing. It's a physical thing that is constantly forming and reforming itself. And of course, it's kind of in the form of a tree. And as Riley is having more experiences and going throughout life, Life and developing this sense of self, the roots of the tree form in their own ways to create who Riley is as a person. And I don't know, I thought that was just a genius way to convey that. Something about Pixar, man, these guys are just so fucking creative. They just know how to show something that'll be understandable for kids and completely resonates with adults. Is there a cat behind? Ah! Can't stop, won't stop, don't stop. I got her in here and the other one is outside because they had a bath recently and I guess the other one can't recognize her. So she's been hissing at her and swiping her and shit. If y'all have any advice for this, please let me know because this is annoying. Like I, I hate hearing her hiss at her and watching her stare at her all day like with this like evil eye, just like, oh. these are her ears. She's like, oh, you are the enemy. I must watch you, you're getting too close. She'll even like walk up to her to hit her. And I'm just like, if you got beef with her, why don't you just go do your own thing? I, I guess cats and humans ain't all that different. Okay, so we can talk about Riley now. Riley and her best friends have gone to this hockey camp for about a week. And at this hockey camp, there are older kids. These are like high schoolers. And one of them in particular, Riley is absolutely obsessed with because she's some crazy good hockey player or whatever. You know how people get about sports. While there, Riley gets the understandable urge to befriend this person, to be cool with this person, to look cool to this person. And that's kind of hard to do when your best friends are still like mentally 13, just like you are. So when they start being goofy and childish and stuff, it makes you wanna be, hey, you better stop. We gonna rumble and tumble, big fella. So yeah, in Riley's attempt to become cooler, to look cooler to this group of older kids, she kind of starts dissing her friends. And I know most of us have been through that. I know I've been through that, but yeah. Anxiety has pretty much come in to want to push Riley towards a future that'll be beneficial for her, like making the hockey team and like getting a scholarship to go to college and being this super successful hockey player. And the OG emotion, specifically Joy, is like maybe we should just kind of let Riley do her thing. Like, yeah, it's important to think about, you know, your mistakes or your not so great decisions, but we don't have to think about all that shit right now. But the problem with Joy is that Joy has just been discarding all these bad memories from Riley's mind. She's just been kind of throwing them in the garbage. You ain't have to ball it up and throw it in the trash. And anxiety has to kind of come in and show Joy that while she's been dumping all these negative things out of Riley's mind, Riley hasn't been learning any real things about herself. She hasn't been learning any real lessons. She hasn't been learning from her mistakes and applying whatever happened in those situations to whatever she's doing in the present. And that creates a scenario where Riley finds herself in some trouble and she ends up having, you know, an anxiety attack. And this is something that super resonated with me. There's a video on the channel where I talk about my anxiety. I'm not telling you to go watch it. I'm just referencing that it is there. And it's a real thing for me. I've been dealing with this since I graduated high school. And I guess I kind of went backwards because when I was a teenager, I didn't really deal with anxiety that much. It wasn't until I was very much an adult where I really started to have this, you know, really, see, here it goes. Yep, here it comes. It wasn't until I was well into adulthood where I started to 
feel the effects of this anxiety, the effects of this fear of embarrassment, this fear of, you know, looking shameful or appearing undesirable or, you know, this fear of failure, this, all these different things just bouncing around my head. I've had the sleepless nights. I've had the uh, trying to talk myself out of what might be a good decision. These are things that I've dealt with in adulthood. And that's what makes what Pixar does so crazy. I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm in my twenties and it ain't my early twenties. Okay. A nigga is getting close to that 3-0. Okay. But it's crazy to me that I can watch this animated film about a teenage girl and actually relate to what the film is getting at. Actually relate to these, you know, things that she's going through, not just because I experienced them when I was her age, but also because I experience a couple of those things now from as small as waving at somebody that you think is waving at you only to see that they're not waving at you and to instantly want a rope to, but all the way to something as major as being weird towards your friends, being weird towards your parents and not really being the most upfront about what you want to do or who you want to be around or, you know, all of those things, they're very difficult to communicate as a human being. And this is why I'm just 90% of the time I'm floored by how Pixar can communicate all this human shit in, in, in these amazing animated movies, dog. Like this, you know I was crying in this shit, man. Are you crying? No. Yes. If you have been here since the past lives review, you know that I ain't no stranger to tearing up in a the theater, okay? It, it, it happens more regularly than I would like it to. But yeah, I was fucking sniveling. I was a mess at the end of this movie. I'm sitting there. <laughs> I was going to go reserved on this, but whatever, man. Inside Out 2 is an A+. The movie is great, man. The animation is fantastic. The characters are great. They're endlessly watchable. It's relatable. It's emotional. It's short. It's only, it's a brisk hour and a half. You'll be in and out of that joint. It's a great time in the theater, man. It's easily one of my favorites of the year. Okay, big question for y'all. How do you rank your top five Pixar movies? You don't need to rank all of them unless you want to, but give me your top five Pixar movies. Drop them in the comment section below and also drop your thoughts about Inside Out too if you've seen it. And yeah, that's it for me. See you guys in the next video.